सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली दिस इज अल एपिसोड ऑफ कट दटर एज यू वुड एक्सपेक्ट ऑन द काउंटिंग डे एंड एज अगेन यू नो ऑन द काउंटिंग डे वी ट्राई टू टेक आउट टेक अप टेन key takeaways from the results so as we as we mark out the 10 top takeaways from the four state election results this time the first and the most significant one leads on to the prospects in next summer's general elections it is that narendra modi's appeal and popularity is much stronger towards the end of his second term than it was at any point since may 2014 that's when he came to power unlike the winter of 2018 Five years back, when he seemed to be struggling, that's when his party failed to win all three heartland states: Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, and Madhya Pradesh. Unlike 2018, when his party seemed to be struggling, the situation now has reversed. It's counterintuitive, but Modi's own popularity has grown with the length of his tenure. He had always seemed to be the front runner by some distance for 2024, and this, however, gives him. more tailwind he was always the front runner now he has the tailwind behind him it also delivers a crippling blow to the morale of his rivals and calls into question the inability of india the alliance to limit him to a below majority that is below 272 mark in the lok sabha forget defeating him we had noted more than once that while he was able to sweep the lok sabha elections for himself or when he was on the ticket directly as in gujarat he couldn't quite do so in other state elections madhya pradesh chatisgarh and rajasthan have now shown that he has broken that paradigm in each of the three he put himself on the ticket with modi ki guarantee campaigns and one it was risky audacious but he won of course the karnataka assembly elections remain an exception come to the second point now if you dissect the congress's numbers it hasn't become weaker in the three heartland states not even by a percentage point it is just that the bjp has become stronger in madhya pradesh and rajasthan the congress has maintained its 2018 vote share almost to the last decimal point even in chatisgarh the loss is just by 1 percentage point let me explain it to you in 2018 in madhya pradesh congress got 40.89% vote now at last count was 40.52 and at last count so a few more votes will come in so almost exactly the same in rajasthan in 2018 it was 39.3% this year if anything it might be marginally higher at 39.53% in chatisgarh it was 43% now it's 42% so that's just a 1% fall if it maintained its vote share then why did it get decimated so which brings us to the next point While the Congress maintained its vote share, the BJP added seven, four, and thirteen percentage points in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Chhattisgarh, respectively. A clearer two-way party polarization is a trend we've been noting for the past many years. That is the others category, the others, the others column in election results has been fading away, disappearing. in this case all the voters disillusioned with the others which means the smaller regional parties tribal parties caste based parties and rebels they've gone to the bjp that's how its vote share has risen without being able to dent the congress party the congress isn't losing its base it just can't expand it and that is something for the congress to think about which brings us to the fourth point this campaign was remarkable in the relative absence of the use of hindutva surely In Rajasthan there were references to the Udaipur beheading and PFI rallies in preference to Ram Navmi processions but it wasn't still the central strand in the BJP's campaign the lesson is that hindutva and nationalism now play out in the background constantly for the BJP like the Tanpuras in a classical music concert remember the people who sit in the back are, and are constantly playing the Tanpura to just set the tone there are temples being built or renovated all the time summits being held 
foreign dignitaries coming in or your prime minister going and meeting them overseas and military accusations being headlined all the time. Rapid construction of highly visible infrastructure feeds into this. That's why overt Hindutva isn't always needed. It is understood. It's taken as red, as is nationalism. While the Congress will take some satisfaction in its Telangana revival, its India allies, INDIA, its India allies will also take note of the fact that the Congress still cannot measure up to the BJP when in direct contest with it, particularly in the Hindi heartland. This will cast a shadow on the future of the alliance and the Congress party's stature within. In fact, Congress party might also like to reflect on whether they were, they were not adequately respectful to the alliance partners in these elections. A few seats given to Samajwadi party or maybe, maybe one or even to Aam Aadmi party in these elections would not have hurt it or would it have hurt it. Now the next point, the opposition party's idea and particularly the Congress party's idea that freebies are the only antidote to the BJP's Hindutva nationalism mix is now fully defeated. To be able to mine, mount even a halfway credible challenge, the Congress will need to build a true alternative agenda to Modi's because you can, you can promise more freebies or more, more, more welfare. Modi and BJP will promise even more, even better and they have a record of delivering it quite efficiently. And once he puts Modi ki guarantee there, it becomes that much tougher for you to defeat his politics with welfareism or freebies. What the Congress needs to do if it wants to really fight Modi, it has to, it has to build a counter view on identity, nationalism and the economy which has its own hallmark, which is different. If anything, that idea of Mohabbat Ki Dukaan versus Nafrat Ka Bazaar was an interesting ideological idea that Rahul Gandhi came up with during his Padyatra, but then he completely forgot about it and got into transactional politics. And transactional politics does not make for any product differentiation. Next point, it is impossible for the opposition to beat the BJP with identity politics. There are no magic solutions like caste censors. You can't use caste, you can't use ethnicity, religion to beat the BJP. No caste censors kind of magic solutions will work. There is some juice in that idea, caste censors, but it will be specific to a few states, maybe Bihar, maybe one or more. These ideas have to be thought through much more deeply, however. In this case, we had people promising immediate caste censuses after elections if they won power without even questioning the Modi government on why the 2021 national census had not yet taken place. This comes from learning and doing your politics on Twitter. Next point, corruption charges against Narendra Modi do not stick, nor do personal attacks. The Rafale campaign failed in the past, Adani has bombed now. Campaign flourishes like Panauti, remember that? See that Panauti arrived on the ground, so India lost that final World Cup final to Australia. So these campaign flourishes like Panauti consolidate Modi's base rather than dent it. Where is that one new big idea, the ideological contest? That is what the opposition needs to come up with. We move on to the next point. In the Hindi heartland, the BJP organization is far stronger than any of its challengers, particularly the Congress parties. In any case, besides UP and Bihar, Congress party is the main challenger to the BJP almost across the heartland, as is, as is its party leadership and coherence, that is the BJP's central leadership and coherence. It showed in how it brought state rivals together, rehabilitated Shivra Singh Chauhan in time, just in time in Madhya Pradesh and Vasundhra Rajay too before it was too late. In the first rounds, their people were not even given tickets. In the, in the second rounds, in the follow-up rounds, as the BJP realized that there were challenges on the ground, they accommodated their people, both Shivra Singh Chauhans and Vasundhra Rajay's and also put them in the campaign. Vasundhra Rajay's picture, in fact, started appearing on election posters only in the later stages. The BJP is able to make these corrections because it stays close to its cadres that, ensure, that ensures it doesn't lose contact with the ground. You want to see an extreme example of what happens when you lose this connect with the ground? Check out KCR's BRS in Telangana. If KCR had had his ear to the ground, he would have never jumped onto his idiosyncratic idea of national leadership, even renaming his party from Telangana Rashtra Samiti to Bharat Rashtra Samiti. 
And finally, some relief. The tenth point, finally, some relief that these results bury that most regressive idea of a return to the old pension scheme for government employees. Of the four states where they promised it, the Congress party won only Telangana. And that's the one where the OPS wasn't made such a big deal of in the campaign. Here is my opinion then in conclusion. Whatever your, whatever your voting preference is, entirely for the sake of India's healthy political economy, count this as the biggest gain of these polls. That the idea of old pension schemes, old return to old pension scheme as an election winner has now been buried.